On the date, August 8th, 2023, the infamous cat artist and YouTuber Vixels bamboozled the whole nation. At 8 a.m. on a typical Wednesday, an eerie post suddenly appeared in the community tab, depicting a gray and black cat in what seemed like MS Paint. Upon further investigation, we noticed the top of the post asked a very targeted question. Results were shocking. Within just a few hours, comments came pouring in. Many users believed that the work of art had been made in between the years of 2012 and 2015. However, the fans seemed to be onto something. Something suspicious was afoot. We reached out to a longtime follower of the artist for their opinions on the matter. I knew we had to conduct further research. After taking over their computer and investigating for suspicion of false advertising and deceptive business practices, we looked at the file date. The results were baffling. 2023. Ah, uh, yes, I got busted. That artwork is in fact not an older piece, but if you've stuck around for a while, you guys know that I take immense joy in looking at my old art from around the wonderful years of 2011 to 2013 and roasting it on an open flame and then finishing the whole ordeal with a new piece of artwork to show my improvement. Yippee! Wow, almost like that's the entire plot of your Let's Review series. How original. Shush, I wasn't done, go away. And don't get me wrong, it was incredibly satisfying to turn this into this. We've heard this a million times, broski. Be original already. But, 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 wait, wait, hear me out. What if I did the exact opposite of that? So that leaves us with the title of this video. Y'all get to watch me suffer for 10 minutes while I try to draw the same way I did when I was a kid. Yeah, let's go back to 2011, when I was still a character you used frequently. Yeah, man. Yeah, what excuses do you have? Come no. on. I think this is unironically one of the hardest art challenges I've ever challenged myself to do, and you'll see why in a bit, but yeah. I'm gonna be trying to turn some of my most recent art into something I would draw back in the good old days. I am also currently in a severe amount of burnout and art block, so bear with me for a bit while I summon some chaos. I gotta rewire my brain here. So to start off this challenge, I had to dig deep and think about myself and my art as a whole. What inspires my current art? my older art and the cringe nostalgia that comes with it. What will there never be more of? My original art. What inspired my original art? Edgy anime cats on the internet. And to further this experience, I decided to use MS Paint for this challenge. No fancy selection tools, no layers, no easy to pick from color wheel, no smooth line art, no airbrush, no blending, rotating, skewing or stretching, no watercolor tools, no clipping mask, no range of line width, no transparency. Y'all see where this is going. All of the tools that I'm used to for drawing now are just poof gone. I can't rely on the easy way out of this. I am stripped to my bare essentials of pixels, a bucket tool, one layer, three line size choices, and the spirit of 11 year old me screaming how awesome my art is. Funnily enough, I am tired of adulting and to avoid working on a new script for an upcoming video, <coughs> Fire Clan Part 3, <coughs> I found myself wandering into the old reliable tried and true MS Paint for the sake of procrastination and to ease the artistic suffering of blanking on ideas. I actually do use MS Paint here and there when I want to jot down ideas. I used it to make family trees not too long ago because I was just too lazy to open up my regular art program. Oops. But you know, going into this I had to really dig deep to figure out how in the world I used to draw cats. Some of my biggest inspirations back then were Spotted Fire on DeviantArt and the infamous SSS Warrior cats that we all know and love. The era around 2010 is such a nostalgic topic for me and I think I could talk about it for a really long time if I just let myself ramble. And I am so happy to say that I was a kid when the start of the fandom peaked. And that just means I get to make cool inside jokes about waffles. I had to take a step back and simplify what I had overcomplicated. I am so used to the style that I draw in currently that it was so freaking difficult to try and undo years and years of having a sound structure for the cat, to have decent anatomy, to consider things in a three-dimensional plane such as where extra fur would be sticking out or where the other ear would be at a specific angle or what paws would go where if the, if the cat is sitting down at three quarters angle. 
Back then, I did not know what anatomy was or cat genetics. I knew how to draw some circles for a body, triangles for hair, and that was the peak of my childhood. If you take a quick glance at my older art, it was very obvious that I used the well-known three circle tactics. It's where you draw a circle for where the head is, where the chest is, and where the back end is, and you kind of morph them together. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to explain that. You draw them like a bubble. It was pretty much in every how to draw book or every online tutorial for how to draw cats, like ever. I've highlighted it in a few of the pieces, so now that you've seen it, you cannot unsee it. So pushing past all of my blaring alarms and physical brain torture, I started off this drawing with three red circles and used the age-old trick to erase them in MS Paint. I felt so cool back then that I learned that you could literally just fill every gap with the same red and repaint it white or set your tertiary color to red and your primary color to white, right click, and it would turn the whole thing back to white. That made no sense out loud. <laughs> but if I have to suffer, you guys do too. You'll see me doing it in the speed paints. But yeah, back to the whole three circle thing. It makes my characters look like they eat watermelons. To recreate this, I'm having to toss aside all of my anatomy knowledge into a giant pile and light it on fire. I don't know how to mimic the gold mine that is childhood artwork before the knowledge of anatomy. So it's not gonna be perfect. It was a really raw state of artisthood that should quite frankly be appreciated more. One of the things I also take great joy in in my current artwork is the three-dimensional planes of the face so my cats don't look flat as heck. My older ones kind of look like they got hit with a steamroller, but in a stylistic, simple kind of way. Jumping topics here once again, another thing I had to relearn was how to simplify fur patterns. I love making intricate, unique, semi-realistic fur patterns on my cats. Not to shamelessly plug here, but I have two whole tutorials going over the basics of fur patterns. But back then I didn't own any cats and I had no idea how any of that worked. So random triangle stripes it is. I had to do the equivalent of color blocking to get these to look as simple as possible to pass as my older art. Like with the Scorch Mist piece, she probably has one of the most complicated patterns of all of the OCs I have. So trying to put that into simple shapes, simple colors, and simple lines was very difficult. Trying to break that down into smaller chunks was near impossible, so I just went with three colors and ran with it. <laughs> this whole time with all of the pieces, I was like both unlocking and remembering things that I haven't thought about in over 10 years. He opened up a filing cabinet and pulled out some documents with a bunch of dust all over it, poofed all of the dust off of it, and I just didn't even know I had those documents. I'm not gonna lie, this simple little video idea has led me into a whole new way of thinking. Why do we consider this style of art to be bad? Why is simplified lines, colors, and shapes frowned upon? Why are bright colors the bane of every artist's existence? So as an artist, I'm gonna devote an entire series of work to the subject called Beginner Art Styles Don't Suck. Because I as a semi properly with a very heavy emphasis on semi because I'm just starting out, but as a semi properly established artist with a degree, I just made these works of art. Like within the last week. There truly shouldn't be a stigma around it. Did I have fun as a kid with what I made? Yes. Do I have fun as an adult making art? Most of the time, yes. But did I have the most fun I've ever had in a long time going on a trip down memory lane and mimicking my old 2011 art style? Yes, I had an insane amount of fun. I got a kick out of it, and what started as a joke turned out to be an entire new series of work for me. Anyone of any age should be able to draw how they want without being belittled on the internet for it. And even though I make fun of my older art a lot, deep down I have an appreciation and adoration for the little things that make it unique. Anyway, that got really deep really fast. Going back around to the whole point of this video, this challenge did help me get out of art block. It helped me realize that not everything about art needs to be so serious all the time and that I should just have fun every once in a while, just like I used to. Really quickly, I wanted to do a comparison between the original works of art and their remade versions. This feels really weird saying because typically I'm comparing really older art to newer, quote unquote, more developed and refined styles of art. So going backwards to me is just weird to my brain. But the first one I redrew was the first ever art anime back in 2019 of Stonefrost as an apprentice seeing his territory for the first time after his apprentice ceremony. While the colors are still really bright in the original, the remake features even brighter colors and more simplified background. The second was the Scorch Mist artwork where I had to think of how in the world to simplify her fur and all the flowers. The background was really fun though. This one and my previous icon remakes were ones that were suggested to me and I really liked doing them. Speaking of which, my icon remake was like a childhood slap in the face in such a good way. From the higher saturation to the sheer nostalgia, 11 year old me would be proud. Moving on to the scene remakes, the first one tackled was the iconic scene where Stonefrost brings Valley prey as a peace offering, marking the beginning of their relationship. I think this one is so sweet in both versions, and it was fun to play off the innocence of the piece with the early art style edition. 
And lastly, I remade the art where Pebble Stream and Night Watcher are laying in the fluffy grass watching the clouds from the thickness of the forest. This one was my absolute favorite and I loved it so much that I even set it as my desktop background. The bright greens just feel so fresh and lively and it's just pleasant to see it reworked the way it was. Ugh, I'm, I'm just having too much fun with these. So I challenge everyone that when they're in art block to just go back to the more simple days where things don't have to be perfect, where you could just start with a few circles and go from there. I will definitely be revisiting this topic at a later date because it was just so much fun to do. Also, thanks for 16K. This was an absolute blast.